The show features adults using adult language and discussing mature topics. You have been warned. Fucking kill the game. You know, like, you look at it like Riot yeah, has. Overwatch, yeah, Overwatch League, the like, Overwatch League is literally one of those games. Like, Overwatch League was really cool at first. And then you, it's like, yeah, how somehow the thing that Riot has managed to do for multiple years, they managed to fuck up at the first fucking stage, pretty much. Wow. You know, like League of Legends has been running tournaments for a long time officially. Yeah. And suddenly, uh, you know, and you know, the, Riot came in with considerably less money. Oh, yeah. Than Blizzard did at first. I mean, obviously, Riot over time has put way more money into it, but yeah, it's like, how did you manage to botch it that fucking hard? Holy crap, that's actually way cheaper than I thought it would be. Sorry, I'm making a, uh, I'm currently building a, uh, a deck for on, like, um, oh, well, for, yeah. for magic. Well, you should get in the game because we are live. Hey! <laughs> Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, where I am typing the live tweet right now. And we had to do fun and exciting things here. You notice that one of our players is missing. Um, they are taking a, a health day, so I wish them the best. Um, but in any case, does anyone remember what happened last time? Saint Vex, you're me literally anything I don't DM. Huh? You're me literally in any game I don't DM. Yeah. I, I literally like I it was funny because we were ch I was thinking and I'm like, what happened at the end of last session? I'm like, holy fuck, there's way too many games I'm in right now that I can't remember. Okay. We'll we'll back we'll just backtrack and go with the last thing you guys did first. So the first thing the last thing that happened is you guys met a bunny rabbit that had been awakened. So it could talk. And you all said hi. And then River gave it or dropped a bunch of red meat on the ground. And it scared the rabbit because it's a rabbit. And it ran away back into the bushes. But the reason why the context for that is you all were heading south out of the ten towns of the town from ten towns called East Haven in Icewind Vale. And you're heading south towards the spire of the world which is the big mountain range north of the sword coast it kind of divides icewind dale from everything else everything else that um wizards cares about for fifth edition DD. and um the reason you're going there is because of the drugar apparently they got some big war machine of some kind some kind of dragon um that they're planning on using on ten towns and uh you learned this both from your own investigations and from the speaker of East Haven, who learned it from the other speakers, as they had captured a Drugar and interrogated it. Um, the group met the White Lady last session or two, uh, a ghost that haunts the local lake. May or may not possessed Perry and tried to drown her, um, but with all of the group's um, work, that did not happen. And on top of that, the group didn't lose the um, cauldron of plenty that they were selling to the speaker for a lot of money. So um, they stopped that theft from some Zentarum agents. And um, then they got their money, and that's when they started heading south. So we are now on day two as you all are trekking through the tundra. No trees in sight. Anything you guys would like to do during this travel? Like any any RP things? You don't have to, but I thought I might as well ask. Oh, you also all have snowshoes. I do remember you making sure you all had snowshoes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that we did. That we did, yeah. I'm actually just going to keep an eye out for stuff while we're walking. Okay. Just head on a swivel kind of thing. Also, if we see any like small game that we can turn into 
I don't know, rations or just like things we can barter with animals if we need to instead of rations. I'm going to keep an eye on just like flick a knife at it. All right. Give me two checks. The first one, perception. All right. One moment. As an airplane flies over it. Yeah. Quiet airplane. Oh, good. My it doesn't come up on my mic. Soft 20. Uh, you don't really see any threats, but after that, I need you to roll me a survival check, since you are also hunting on the move. Right. 18. Um, with your keen eye and your good survival instincts, um, you are able to find quite a few um, spots where you like dig up some of the snow a bit, and you actually find some... Um, some uh, uh, what am I looking for? This actually wouldn't make sense. I was gonna say you, you dig up like a bunch of like roots and stuff, mm. but that really, really wouldn't be much in the tundra. So you do see like a a small game every once in a while, and yep. using your innate soul knife, um, they are very easily dispatched, especially since you saw them before they saw you. Mm -hmm. And you, you you notice whenever she brings them back, there's not a not a mark on any of them, but they're just they're they're like they are limp, they are dead. Um, you find you get um two winter weasels. Ooh, nice! So you can add their fur coats to your. I want to do some. Oh no, Cisco! And one one <laughs> ration of food. Mm -hmm. Hold on, I will do some organ trail hunting as well. Okay. Yeah, I knew you'd get a giggle out of that one. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. All right, River, go ahead. Uh, 26, survival. Okay. You know a few cobalt tricks here and there. And uh, you actually find two foxes that were actually hiding in the snow looking for other prey. But then they became the prey themselves. They are not fennec foxes, but they are still unfortunately very cute. So you get three foxes. You all have been very busy today. I will look at them hunting with my 38 all the rations. Like, what are you doing? She just has a um she has like some like a, like one or two weasels tied to her belt and just is getting ready for a knife for them and she goes what it's practice and just <laughs> underhand underhands it at one of them and it just slides you you notice as it hits the weasel it just slides right through it into the upper half of it and just out the other side no impact or anything like that and just dissipates the weasel just cartoonishly just flops over she goes over and picks up and goes, besides, you never know, we might need to use this to, I don't know, uh, bargain with some animal rather than kill it. Bait? Bait. Oh, well, that, yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. that makes sense. You never know when there's going to be some kind of like hungry, hungry bear that really wants to eat what you're eating, but you'd rather not spend some of the rations that we have. So yeah, so let's we just, the last time we found or we bears, just kill it. Yeah, we 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 find we found them. True. The goblins just... and the guards. It's no need to. Lee looks at her and just goes, mm, "That's true as well." But hey, again, like I said, practice. You gotta keep yourself sharp, and yeah. <laughs> she just That's like fine. smirks and just points at at uh, Vol. Just goes exactly. You all. Um catch this game, especially because how well you rolled pretty early in the day. It's probably before lunchtime. You're now you're now more judging time of day by when you have meals, because it's kind of hard to when you don't have day night. Um, and around lunchtime, um, a blizzard starts picking up. Like, it was snowing quite a bit in the morning, 
but it just got worse, and then the wind got heavier, and then it just turned into a full blizzard. So you will continue trekking. Um, can't see very far ahead of you. Can't really hear each other. You, but unless you're like five feet away from each other and shouting. But yeah, know it's better to keep moving in the blizzard instead of getting buried in the snow. Unless you have like a magic that can help. Um, and you wanted to stay stationary, which you don't. Um, yeah, we do. Who is who well, did we you, say? You is don't the... want to stay stationary. You do have the well, magic. We, we have a magic to do that. We yeah. have um T posing in the in the corner yeah. is a goblin by the name of Gusum. Yeah. While we're tricking, uh who who is the tallest? Is it Louis Louise now? Or it's it's always been. Always Vogue. Okay. Always Vogue. Well, okay. While while was about the same, but yeah. Uh, that's what I was uh, referring to now, but since uh, Vogue is the tallest, uh, would have light casted on him, so it's easy to see him as a reference point. You notice that as you cast the light on him, it actually makes it detrimental, and it acts as a, as a huge soft light, as all of the light reflects off of the snow that's barraging you all. Damn light reflectivity. Fine, cancel. You, you know, when you if you turn your brights on and it's snowing a lot, same effect. Yeah. Or, or fog. Yeah. That's where you wear sunglasses on this one. You wear sunglasses at night. <laughs> uh, this is actually one of the few places that you probably would wear sunglasses at night. Because it's always night. Yeah. Um, and do you all eat your rations for lunch? Of course. Or do you guys just keep trekking during lunch? I mean, we could eat and walk. Yeah, I would uh, clean and uh, prep the animals that we got today when we make camp at night. Okay, so you just you just have them on essentially like little ropes, and they're just around over your shoulder it, or on the just backpack. Chilling. Yeah. Um, fun fact for anyone who's not a hunter: um, when you catch a small game like that, I'm sorry for anyone who doesn't like this kind of subject. Um, you actually want to bleed them out immediately. Mm-hmm. Um, it helps preserve whatever you got and um, makes it way less for travel. And to be honest, it it's a more merciful kill. Okay, so... Um, unless it's Fantasy World, then you can just magic them and they just die instantly. <laughs> Any case. Uh, well, they would have been drained, but they wouldn't be dressed till we oh, got to yeah, camp. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. You pretty much all you, all you did is... Um, it pretty much, if you leave blood in there, it decomposes and it spoils the meat. Yeah. Is what I'm getting at. Yeah, mine, mine basically, whenever I hit them with the soul knife, they basically, their minds just shut down. Mm -hmm. So they're vegetables, essentially, right now. Yes. But I thought they were meat. Exactly. Mine so are shut so with they're... Elder Splash, so their heads are probably gone. No. Oh, so they're... Oh, I, th I thought you would have used your whip. <laughs> no, bang. <laughs> okay. It's just like Indiana where he had to go to the bathroom like, nope. That's when you notice because you're actively looking around Elena more than everyone else. Everyone else is going with their passives. But um, since you're actively looking around, I'm going to go with your, your role. Um, you see a large-sized creature um, start to come into view. <clears throat> maybe maybe at uh, around like a two o'clock position on your march. Keep in mind, visibility is ten feet, so it's like not even ten feet from you. Oh boy! What do you do? Um, did you guess what I did? Yeah. What do you do? Um, everybody else is kind of just around me, right? Yeah. Within at least, yeah, at least you're, you're within all within feet. the eyesight of each other, I would assume. Yeah. Put up a hand to just stop and then just just be quiet. You notice it um, as you stop, um, it looks over at you. Mm -hmm. And it is a polar bear. Oh. And it looks right at you. I mean, as much as it can in the blizzard. Mm -hmm. And just like puts its head down and then looks away. 
mm -hmm. then looks at you, and then looks away again and starts going in that direction. Do I get the sense that it didn't see us as soon as I stopped? Roll insight. Inside. The rest of you would have noticed this at well as well if you were near the front line. Oh, 18. This is no ordinary bear. Hmm. It seems to be smarter than the average bear. Oh, interesting. I'll just You're thinking you wanted it... you to follow it. Oh, I'll then I'll go after it then. It, it doesn't go at full run. So that way you all mm. can keep up. Right. And within a few minutes, you all are at a what appears to be a hole in the snow as the polar bear starts like digging out a bunch of snow and stuff. I'll go and, and then as let it me... pops out, you notice it's a cave. Wow, oh, nice. Uh, we're changing Sorry. our course. Uh, I want to check my compass and make sure we're still heading in the we're, basic direction as we're supposed to be. We're not heading towards your thing. We already agreed. Oh, I know, I know that. I'm talking okay. about making sure. This five minute detour is maybe like 200 feet difference. You're not going in the opposite direction. Like you, I mean, you didn't lead you north. It's south, either west or east. It's hard to tell during the blizzard. Well, that's what I meant. While we're traveling through a blinding blizzard in the dark of night that we're still on the same uh, correct heading where we should be going. Roll me survive. At disadvantage because you're in the blizzard. At disadvantage that would be what was my plus seven so 23. You all are survival groovers, right? Um yeah, you're definitely heading the right track. I have a plus seven with navigator's tools. Yeah, I'll definitely say that applied to that role. Once uh, she's inside the cave, Alina will look over to the bear and just just give it a, a short thank you. Do you say thank you? Yeah. OK. Um, it looks like it recognizes the words, but doesn't mm -hmm. say anything. And you notice it sits out in the snow for a bit. Mm -hmm. And you all notice that there actually is a um, spot in the cave um, where there was a fire pit at one point. But it looks like it's been hasn't been used in quite a while. So it's just standing sentinel outside the cave? Mm -hmm. At least for a few minutes. Do you do any of you do anything in the cave or you just chill? Look around. Is there anything out in here besides the fire pit? I uh, do notice that there are some tools. And by tools, I mean a mess kit. OK, I'll take a closer look at that. We what comes with it? Uh, a mess kit is essentially like pots and pans, but they're all compact, so you can all they're for travel, essentially. And um, they come with like the spoon and knife and fork, and um, a, a kettle, a small um, thermos, a uh, plate, a big bowl and a smaller bowl, and the smaller bowl has both or both bowls have lids. And that actually clink bun. Um, and everything else is inside the, the big bowl. Is it heavy to carry? Uh, it's it's a Best few pounds, like but you nothing. notice it's been used fairly recently. And that's when the polar bear comes back inside. And it goes to stand on two legs. And as it stands on two legs, you hear bones and muscles pop. And it seems to shrink down in size a bit. And now it's standing in a humanoid position. And it says, shelter from blizzard. Alina, you can stay as long as you want. 
Ilya just blinks a couple of times. Would I know what this this creature is? And they go over and they sit down like a human. You can roll what arcana I... checks. Or nature checks. That's a soft, that's a ten. I did not roll a bow on that. How many oil fish do we have? You have that one oil fish, but it looks like it has a lot of fuel left in it. I have been keeping track. I guess uh, using that, the the oil fish, the mist kit, and the campfire, start making like some soup. Okay. Some, uh, meat. Did you guys want to take like a short rest or? That sounds like a good idea. How long has it been roughly since we started our thing? Um, it's been about half a day. All right. Well, I mean, since you started your trek from East Haven, it's been a day and a half. Yeah, but like oh, since we started this day, I should say. It's been, let's see, four or five hours, maybe. All right. I should still probably let the blizzard like come down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Did my Arcana check yield anything? With a 10, mm -hmm. you are unsure of what this is. But definitely seems to be something supernatural, to say least. Elena will walk over and sit opposite of the, the creature uh, in front of the fire and just, just again say, uh, thank you for letting us stay for a bit. No problem. Um, pardon me for asking. I'm not really from my Swindale, from further south past the spine. Um, I've never encountered a creature like you before. What are you? Ooh. Actually, that should give me a good idea for something. Hmm? I'm a uh, hunter, and uh, you know giant, don't you? Uh, I do not. That was the other character. Okay, that's what that's what it was. Uh, sorry, a skin changer. Does that click any bells in my head out of character? You folks from the south might call us lichens. Oh. Now, no, out of character, does that yeah. ring any bells in Elena's head? Yeah, she, you've, she... you've heard of, like, people being cursed with turning into beasts, more, usually more than not wolves. Mm -hmm. So you've heard of werewolves, but not a bear. So she, and she, so she, her eyes kind of, like, widen a bit, and then she, she realizes what, what this person is, and she goes, so you're a were- Bear? That's a new one. Are you going to eat that? Is he, he asks to River, looking at one of the foxes. Uh, you want it uh, cooked or as is? Either way is fine with it. Uh, question for the group. Are we going to take a long rest here for the night, or are we going to take a short rest and continue on? We've only been going for half a day. We should probably just take a short rest until the blizzard kind of dies down. A yeah, bit and keep going. Mean, wait until the blizzard dies. <laughs> Yetis yeah, so. tend to attack during a blizzard. It's wise to seek shelter. One of we'll go. So in that case, I'm going to go ahead and dress the foxes and cook them up for the group. Okay. Um, Lena is obviously fascinated by this person. <laughs> Why do you look at me like I, I'm, I'm sorry. I've never met uh, a lycanthrope who is in control like you are. I've, I've been with the Guild of Mercenaries for a while, and we've fought some strange things. Werewolves among them. Their minds were always very just raw, just wild. 
I, I'm not reading your mind um, without your permission, I promise. You've extended a hand to us in friendship and in aid. I wouldn't do that. But I've, again, I've never met someone who's your condition, who's been talkative <laughs> in this form. It's, it's a new experience for me. As a cleric, would I have any knowledge of lycanthropy? Um, give me an arcana or history check. Which one's better here? Ugh, not arcana, history. 17. Um, you have heard of the sheep changers that are werewolves, and you know that there are other kinds. Um, where bear is not really is more not something that you thought you would ever meet in person. Let's just say that um, you would know that they're pretty much immune to all normal weaponry unless it's silver or magical, um, and that different kinds of them um, take on the bestial nature in their personality of whatever they are, whatever kind of lycanthropy they have, but um that does that mean that they're all evil so it's like with werewolves how they're more savage the bears can be more stoic and calm mm -hmm. you've actually with that check um you've probably actually heard of like a one tale that like you're not even sure if it's true or not of a werewolf um meaning good and actually hunting other werewolves. Fairy looks very tired. I, I, I think she looks a little more than very tired. I think she's asleep. Nope, she's not. <laughs> what brings you what brings you traveling this far south? We have um, been sent here by one of the folk of Ten Towns to help stop a problem before it hurts a lot of people. Hmm. Hunting the dark dwarves. Hmm. There are Durgar in the mountains of the Spine. They've been harassing Ten Towns and there's rumor that they're preparing to attack with some kind of great weapon. They've been harvesting demon metal for it. Well, it'd be, I'd be very grateful if you were to remove it. Mm -hmm. So would Omen Tar or Omen Nartar. Mm -hmm. Another one of your people, I would assume. As far as I know, she's the original. Oh, I see. She travels she... through this tundra, protecting the Goliath clans from threats. Hmm. And those that she finds worthy, she gives them the same gift. That is... That is incredible. I'd love to meet such, a, such an individual. Seem like... The stories they must have. Things they must have seen up here. Not much, to be honest. Hmm. I predict a lot of snow. See <laughs> those stories. I mean, I just chuckles at that. Probably more these days than most, I would assume. Probably. How long have you been afflicted by the lycanthropy? I've lost track of time, to be honest. Hmm. Perhaps a decade or two. So she she deemed you worthy then. Yes. Hmm. Have you ever tried to have it removed? I don't think that Why they want it. That? Exactly. I don't think they want it removed. It's a gift. To some it's a gift. To others, it's a curse. That's why I asked. 
It is not something that's giving out willy-nilly. Unlike the werewolves who seem to be driven by the by spreading it. I, I've heard tales of our wolf armor. We are nothing like that. Mm. I mean, but you give part of your self to it anyway. I mean, solitude seems to be a very fair like attribute instead of a humanoid one. You, you all would definitely notice at this point that even though you build a fire and you guys are cooking around it and talking, he made sure he's like on the opposite wall of the cave. Like he's mm -hmm. away from the fire. Right. It's probably too warm for him. So how did you come about uh, being gifted with it? That is something that I cannot tell you. That's fair. Here's just some uh, food. Thanks. Um, you toss him some food and he just like crunches it bone and all if there's bone in it. Um, trying to find things real quick. Because he's going to have things he can tell you about. Oh, I know what he's going to do. Um, so you are crunching, or you give him that, and he starts eating it. And there's just this long, awkward silence of him just munching on the food. And he's just kind of looking out at the winds. Um, and then after he eventually finishes um, eating a uh, box, I guess, okay. he says, you have been some of the more sociable guests I've had. And since you are so kind and giving, Perhaps I should tell you of what I've learned. Do you you have definitely know of the Frost Maiden at this point, being up here? Of course. Mm. She apparently lives on a misty isle hidden among the bergs of the Sea of Moving Ice, north of here. Mm -hmm. There's a mighty strange whale with a boat on its back that swims in these frigid waters. Pretty sure it knows where the island is. So, wait, she's manifested here on the material plane? Yes, she has been for a few years now. Why do you think this winter never ends? I mean... She does it herself. I have seen her fly in the sky with her bird, casting her divine spell. She's actually on the, on the mortal plane. I would not suggest oh. visiting her unless it's absolutely necessary. She's done to been spiteful. Since she's here, maybe we can eventually go see her if she, if she can stop giving everyone the cold shoulder. Lily, I just chuckle as it says, Kill, fighting a god is a lot easier when they're on the mortal plane. If we fight her at all. <laughs> You went, are you serious? Liliana looks at him and says, she's not the god I intend to kill, but I have, I, I have to, I plan to do that nonetheless. I mean, people uh, are hurting. People, the people of the Dale are hurting. If there's any way we can reason with her, if it comes to force, it accomplish that, that most it buys some time for nature to heal. So are the gods not also a part of nature? They are, but <sighs> well, I, yeah, I, I do not like her at all. She brings misery and suffering to these lands. Exactly. As do most gods. <laughs> yeah. 
A few of her worshippers just... have turned into fanatics, willingly turning themselves to the to the uh, weather, frostbiting themselves, using weapons made of that horrible ice crystal. Sure, darling. Yes. I wonder if they're in league with the Duragar. I doubt it, unless the Drugar are in league with the Frostbaden herself. True. They probably wouldn't be. They probably see her as weak for just being a surface god. I mean, the Durgar live underground, so they don't care that much about the Frost Maiden and the mm -hmm. freezing stuff. So we'll take advantage of the fact that she's uh, created this two year long darkness for them, essentially. Not yeah, I mean, for them. Sorry, but... now that we're weak. Mm -hmm. Don't mind me asking, what is this Drugar you speak of? Do you know what a dwarf is? Like a man, but shorter. Yes. yes. Imagine one of those. Usually with... yells a lot and has a lot of beard. Mm -hmm. Yes. Imagine one of those, but their complexion is like ash, like dark, dark soot. And their beards are shock white, like the snow. And I... they can turn invisible. Mm -hmm. I have seen to... a few of those. You have? Yes, I let them rest in this very cave. I'm sorry, what? They weren't very nice. Mm, yes. They're not the most hospitable folk. They tried to swing a sword at me. <laughs> Aren't they like all brainwashed or something like that? They, Elena turns over to Bolg and goes, not exactly. We fought them before, um, so I've done a little digging on them. Durgar were once slaves of the Mind Flayers. In that tenure, their minds were stripped of every concept of love and joy and beauty. I have no idea what the hell a Mind Flayer is. It's, you know, have you ever seen a squid? Oh no, wait a second. We saw the little mm, cute ones. Yes, we did. We met them in the... Um... You have in that one play, or well, I shouldn't say I do the cute ones. <laughs> US, no. however, did never mind. The US, yeah, we, we met those ones that were um gnomes, gnomes, the one the that the ones, yeah. fog hugged a little too aggressively. I mean, yeah, once you say that, because I don't remember that fog we, fought a bit too hard about. Did we talk about them on flyers there? Main flyers there? Wait, so you've seen them before the actual i mean they had like a really weird boat with tentacles that crashed elena nods wait so you've been aboard one of, the, of their contraptions i mean i wouldn't see them board you hear the sliding light. of stone on stone as the T-posing prism slides further away from the rest of the group <laughs> <laughs> uh... not moving from the T-pose at all just like it's a little, yeah, it's a little touchy subject. I think she was experiment from the... And she's, and she's still sane. Uh, sane needs a word we it's could use, maybe, to describe that. prism. Fair, At some point, we're... maybe not now. Maybe Fair. someday we can use it. She just shrugs fair. I can't say that I've ever traveled with the same group before. Uh, you get around psychics uh, for a long time. You notice they tend to be a bit odd, myself included. Not trouble with many psychics, but plenty of psychos. <laughs> Y'all are very weird. She turns back to the werebear and just goes, but essentially, yes, dwarves, but just very mean and very rude, like you've said. Dwarves, but even angrier. Mm. Well, as I said, you can stay in this cave as long as you would like, as he goes to get up. And you notice that even in his hybrid form, he stands taller than... Um... God, I'm brain farting. Who is his name? Volg. 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 
Um, and he's got, and he's got that 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 dad bod because he's a werebear. Um, I, I put in the chat. He's both a da- a a, ba- a bear and a bear. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. In any case, um, he says, "I'm going to go hunting for food." You do not have to wait for me to come back. I might not be back for another few days. She'll uh, little just nod and say, thank you for your your hospitality. Mm -hmm. Elena will extend Thank you for the conversation. (laughs) I do not have them very often. Elena will extend a hand for him to shake and he just goes, thank you again. You know, he he carefully shakes your hand. Mm -hmm. She carefully does as well and just smiles and goes, well, as I've told many people before, may the dancer light your path. May the white walker bless you. And she just leaves. nods and lets him go. I will give him three owlbear like jerky rations, just in case. Oh. Uh, he just takes it and um, I forgot to say that when he's in his hybrid form, he does his clothes just suddenly appear on him and he does have like a satchel and he just puts him in a satchel and he goes out into the snow and as you notice him going out into the snow he puts his arm down in the ground and he just searches for a bit and then he pulls up a spear that you guys did not know was there before and he starts heading out Lena just head back, heads back to the fire and sits down. Well, we all sorts of interesting people up here, I guess. So, how long were you guys going to stay here? Till the till the blizzard ends. The blizzard, yeah, till the... or at least like slows a little bit. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, you stay here for a total of four hours, and you think that you burn through about half of that oil fish. Okay, there's four hours left on it, but I'm keeping track. Okay. Um, and the way clears. It's actually now a clear sky, and you can see the aurora borealis, and there's little to no wind. Mm. But it looks like you guys never walked out there before. As we go outside, can we see anything in the skies? I mean, you see the aurora borealis. Besides that? Stars. Hmm. Is, the is there anything you're visible? specifically looking for? Uh, what he mentioned before. The White Walker? No, no, no. The Frost Maiden. Oh. He, he did mention the Frost Maiden flying around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's roughly afternoon right now. Hmm. I, I'd assume uh, Prism would teepose pose and extinguish the fish so we could take it with us. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it, it, I just imagine she just like slides over it, over to it. Her entire body just flops and then comes right back up with the fish stuck to her face like a cartoon. Mm-hmm. It just sticks to one of the many ice spike parts. Right, exactly that. Yeah. Um. All right. All right. So then, after that, you will continue heading south, mm-hmm. and for the rest of the day. Um, you guys don't really have any other um, significant interactions with any other creatures or whatnot, and you set up camp for the night. You guys gonna do watches and whatnot? Yes. Um, We're pres- still in the prism dome, right? just kind of goes like ee, 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 for like a minute or so, and then the t- the tiny hut appears. It's mm-hmm. Still good to keep watch, even if we do have the hut. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Liliana will take uh, volunteer for last watch. What's our uh, rations looking like, Bog? A lot. A lot. We also don't need to eat we still another have... thing. Of, we also don't need to eat another thing of rations. Vogue, already... Vogue pulls out uh, a 35. literally an, a sack filled with rations. So like 30 pounds in that and he doesn't even get his other bag that had more. Yeah. 
prepared. Yeah, like you, you can minus one rations. Minus one rations. A Russian? Or whatnot. Russians well, we made that soup. Russians we, we, made, we made that soup, right? So we, we would need to do the rations. Did you have the soup this morning? We had the soup during midday during while well, in our short rest. Oh, right. Okay. Right? Remember mm -hmm. we had the fox soup? Yep. We had fox soup with the werebear. So a Russian is a day? Or the food? Yeah, ration is one day of food. You don't need to mark any rations down, Scott, though. It's, you is it's one, one pound of food a day. Yeah. I'm honestly surprised we don't burn through more with this, you know, trekking through freezing weather. I mean, freezing weather does slow your metabolism down. Yeah, but you'd exert more energy. I mean, you, know, you, do. you can't eat more. You just need at least a pound of food a day. You only need a pound of food. Tell that to Americans. You can't <laughs> eat any more. Uh, nom, 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 nom. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take um, middle watch. So I have like almost six days of rations. If nobody like brought anything else, I also have my own rations. So I can literally oh. create meals whenever we want. Yeah, I don't think we need to worry about food all that much. I'm mm -hmm. gonna dump the jerky on the ground. Like if you keep doing this to me. Um. Chat, I just noticed, brought up a great question that you guys never asked. What is the name of this good gentle bear, I wonder? I thought Berenstein? we would have... But he never offered it, though. He never asked. We never asked. Yeah. yeah. He never asked for your name. Yeah, exactly. That's I figured fair. he didn't, he I mean, didn't have a need for names. We call it the werebear. It's not like we found, like, werebears. It's not like we found every other day. <laughs> We were strangers in the night. In any case, who's taking first watch? I heard the last watch and middle watch. So we have two. Uh, more or less, we should probably do what we did last time. Yeah, I'll, I'll share a watch with someone because I don't trust myself. Go on first, then. Okay. Um, River, give me a perception roll. That is 16. Okay. Um, besides the howling winds, you don't really see much during your watch. And you go to wake up, I think, Elena. Well, it would be either Elena or, per or Perry and uh, Volg, I believe. I took, I took Mill. Yeah, well, no, you need to have four blocks of, wa of watch. Still, okay. yeah, I think me and Barry should do a watch together because we do yeah. make almost a character, so yeah, because I was saying, because yeah, you need to have four, you need, you need you can only sleep, you only need to sleep for six hours, but everybody needs a total of eight hours of rest, in quotes, right? Keep in mind, I still do have my walking stiff that can you know, assist, yeah. I don't think we trust him to keep an eye on for us, uh, yeah. He'll he'll do watch which, which one did you have now? The, the one that Vogue uh, trampled uh, one of the guys that was attacking the mayor. Oh, right. Okay. Sorry. One of them got stomped, so I was like, wait, you got another one? Um, and I recycle. As necromancers do. Um, both Vogue and Perry, give me perception rolls. Perception Twelve. One. Before I go to sleep, I'm gonna I want to tell Vog if any ghosts appear with you and Perry, wake me up instantly, please. Okay, ghosts. We don't need a repeat of last time. Yeah, no. Which last time? <laughs> when the the weeping woman wept inside her. I mean, no, I got this. I can cut a wolf. I will. When you chase a ghost around town, silver. or when you chased a ghost around town? Uh, time we chased a ghost around town out into the ice. Gotcha. That was both times too. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it's a running theme. Also, Scotty, I just realized that they, both times they chased ghosts out onto things. I did not join them. I was doing something else both times. 
Yeah, you you call someone else in for that. <laughs> who, who? They're dead now. They're dead in canon, Scotty. Oh, that's true. I killed them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, Ray. Well, that's on a that's in a different verse. But <laughs> in case, um, you two don't really notice anything of significance. Actually, Perry probably falls asleep within the first ten minutes of her watch. Because she looks like how she does right now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, then you guys wake up Elena. Well, I guess all of wake up Elena. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Although, like, yeah, we've been super awake, both of us, all the time. Uh, nothing oh, happened. So it's your turn. All right, here we go. She gets up and settles in for her watch. Only that perception. Perception. Yeah, seven. You watch as the Aurora Borealis moves around in the sky during your watch, and you're wondering if she's up there right now, casting her spell. Can Elena see the moon at all? Uh, yes, and it is a waxing crescent. Mm. So Elena is just staring up at it, just, just rubbing her thumb over her pendant, and just goes, why are you not here? Are you letting her get away with it? Is there something I'm just not seeing? Just sighs and just keeps looking up at the moon. And then until it's time for her to wake up or her. No, not there, me. No, Liliana, yeah. Just, yeah, nudges Lily. Lily is up pretty the moment you t- like touch her. Ah, sorry. Just, just like is laying there, just eyes open. I would say at this point the sky has clouded up a bit. Lily just... and I will just kind of get back to rat sleep. Okay. Anything interesting happen? No. Clear, clear, shimmery skies. Just looks up at the cloud cover and just goes, which didn't last for long. Seems to never last long here. Yeah. As long as she's here, it's never going to last long. That, however, is a problem for later us. Aaron just smiles and just pass the on on the shoulder and she goes, now I think I'll see if I can get some more of that, should I? Good idea. Right. She goes, just lays back down and tries to go back to sleep. Luciana. Perception. All right. Perception. 23. It is a very silent night. If you worship both the Frost Maiden, quite a holy night, for it is quite cold and miserable, and you're alone out here in this tundra. Snow gently falls as you're taking your watch. When you notice, just barely within your uh, vision, something small moving to a little snowbank. You kind of keep your eye on it, but you just do your rounds. Mm-hmm. And you circle back around, you notice that uh, it is a little rabbit here. Hmm. And it has come up to the hut, and it is sniffing it, but it is very cautious. Its ears are up, and it's looking around. Does it look similar to the rabbit we met earlier? No. This was like a normal hair. Hmm. All right. Well, then I'll just leave it be. Okay. 
So he's gonna first. I should within a, a few moments. Yeah. It it quickly is like, like it was sniffing it, kind of sniffing yeah. the air, and then it just scampers off into another snowbank. I assume it's a fairly innocuous looking hair. Mm-hmm. And before you know it, it's quote unquote morning. Liliana will start waking everyone up. Zofran casually kicks everybody's bedroll. Pretty much. You notice one bedroll is shaped like a tea puzzle. I don't kick that one. She needs her beauty sleep, apparently. Yeah. It's, it's actually three bedrolls. One for each arm and then one for the torso. And it gets up. She makes sure that she actually stretches every one of her fingers as much as she can. Mm-hmm. S- spreads them as far as she can because, again, it's all in the wrist. She rolls her wrists and backs her neck. All right. Day three. Let's go. Yep. And uh, the hut just and just a very thin layer of snow just on everybody. <laughs> and you continue going off out into the wilderness on day three. Not long after you're, you start going, um, it stops snowing. So though it still stays cloudy and it's a little windy. Uh, you see the mountain range. Well, you, you were starting to be able to see it the night before, but you definitely see it now. And you can see a um, patch of trees in the distance, which you know is the direction you need to be heading. And you're almost to the mountains, or at least the valleys. Finally. Almost there, buddy. We should be cautious when we get clo- as we get closer. Right. I have a perimeter guard or something. Um, every once in a while, there's a snap of a twig um, and creaking of wood as you travel through this silent forest. It is, as cliche as it is, a winter wonderland. A lot of things seem very untouched. You would notice um, a little bit of trails of maybe deer and other things that have traveled through here, probably seeking shelter in one place or another. And um, you are almost to the other side in the evening when you hear in the distance another group of travelers. You can hear um, them crunching through the snow and crunching through it. Yeah, just holds up a hand for a way to stop and just puts a finger to her lips for quiet. And looks over to Leon and just gives a nod and goes to scout ahead quietly. Yeah, Leon will if, go to stealth. Before you really get to scout ahead, you do get time to roll stealth as you lay low into the snow. So, nineteen. Um, yeah. Mine is twenty-two. Okay. Uh, everybody sees a group of four Goliaths wearing fur pelt clothing. Um, with the uh, winter winter clothing, both of them having or them having axes, and you can see um, quivers for javelins. Do and, the ax- uh, do the axes look like they're made of that metal? They do not. Oh, thank goodness. So they were the Goliaths I found. Here, let me get it on my way to the door. Fortress. Um. Yes. I mean, they don't look exactly like them, but they're probably from uh, the same area. Um, And they stop as they notice you all. Well, they notice 
three of you. Some of you. Four of you. And one puts a uh, bit in the in the air to wave. Hey. Quick little glance back at the other ones, other Goliaths, and they continue moving forward. Um, their paths seem to be intersecting with yours. Does it look like they're going to stop and talk with the rest of the group, or are they going to just keep going? They look like they're going to keep going unless you um, unless you want to talk with them. Hmm. I want to talk with them. How far away are they? Um, I mean, right now they're probably about 200 feet, but there's a lot of trees and stuff in the way. Oh, we're out of the tundra. Oh, yeah, yeah, you've been in the woods for yeah. a few hours now. Okay. Um, and it is definitely not not as windy anymore, thank goodness. And the snow is nowhere near as bad as what it was. But it's still just as cold and dark. Um, they do. One of them does have a um, lantern. I think about it. And um, as you start to trot up to them, um, the Volk, the one in the front is Lady, and she goes, "Is what? Sorry, a lady." Oh, and she looks at you um, questionably. And you've seen this look before. This is the look of someone who's never seen Cenotar before. No. Oh. Hello, she's... I met some people. I think it's from your world. Poke, poke on the horse part. Which part of the horse part? Like, <laughs> like, where, 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 like the chest of the horse, where it like, connects uh, with the human part. Okay, I will not move our face. Uh, I will keep talking to the woman. <laughs> like, she, yeah. She's like, Shunga, Shunga Nuanda. And the others laugh. And she's like, and then she looks up at you and she says, Oh, hi. I've never seen a horse person before. It's, it's common, you know, where the fairies live and we fuck people up. Um... <laughs> one, of, one, of the, one of the glides in the back says, When the... Ooh, oh, oh. And he does like a pelvic thrust and the rest laugh. <laughs> I like the other guys better. Um, <laughs> so did I, I don't remember their names, but I will did you did, tell, you did you want to trade? I want to know if oh, oh. Goliath uh, entered Goliath's name from the grief ones or not. I was worried. Garfield tried to jump up and he didn't quite make it. Oh. Um, it I'm sorry, what did you say? <laughs> uh, I will say the name of the Goliath they found that point me in the Durgar direction, direction the last time. Because I know they were looking for the Griffins. And I'm curious if they found them or not. Ooh, that's a good question. I know it was a, a group of three or four Goliath, and there was a woman, and I talked to the party leader, who was a Goliath, and they told me they lost the Griffins. But I, I forgot their names uh, I think in real life, because I forgot everything. You mentioned Griffins, I, and she kind of scowls at you, and she's like, from, from the Sky Tower? Yes. She spits on the ground next to you. Never mind. You look like kind of similar. But Ooh. again, you have like monkey Her legs, eyebrows so rise in a defense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's how what? it is. You think just Elena. because your bottom Elena. half is a horse, you think you're so awesome. Well, Elena we can show out. you. Here we I'm go. sorry, Elena. I look at monkey legs. Elena steps out from behind oh. her and, and just goes... <laughs> And just puts up a hand to just like go between them and put up a pair of hands. Like like she almost rises out of the snow cartoonishly and just goes, Oh no, everybody, let's take a breath. I bet you can't do this. And she puts down her great axe 
And she does a handstand. This is where Val breaks out his handstand <laughs> skills as a horse. Yeah, I will. I will drop my my shield and my my sword, and and also be like, hmm, hmm. Did we need to put cardboard just, down for you to break dance each other? I okay, like, I no, brought him a no, horse. No. So I need you to give me an athletics check. I mean, like, we, do we have this bandage? Because like, is Elena in the middle? Are you? Are you trying to? Um... I'm making your DC higher for the athletics because. <laughs> You're like three fourths of your body. I'm being very generous. Is like, yeah. Are you trying to? Are you trying to handstand with your horse half, or use your human half to support your horse half? I mean, I mean, it depends on what horse she's gonna tag, I guess. Because I assume I have full control of my body. So if she's trying to attack my horse part, I also oh, no, 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 she's not. Her. She's not attacking. She did a handstand. She she said I bet you can't do a handstand and just gave you a hand well just did a handstand. You know she balances now on one hand. Oh shit, I should roll for this. Sorry, what's the question? Wait, is you are you injured she yourself on, on her hands? Both and kind of uh, upside down. Uh, yeah. You remember did you ever watch the Emperor's New Groove? Okay, no, I'm doing that with my human part, so I'm lifting the whole horse part. Okay. Okay. You notice her do that and she does like one push up while I'm doing that. She's doing the the um, shoulder devil thing from Emperor's New Groove, and the, and the other three Goliaths are like oh, and they're just like like super pumped and excited, and then they look at you oh, enthusiastically. Oh, well, you don't have to do this, but it would look really freaking cool if you did. I'm just like, uh, one, one of the other Goliaths says, "No, you don't have to do it. I mean, uh, uh, you weren't that very good at it anyway. We're obviously uh, better. It's fine." Before, okay. before he rolls his check, I'm going to pat him on the back to wish him luck with guidance. Elena is going to step aside and, and step next to Leon and just whisper here. How much you bet she, that he's gonna he's gonna get it? Also, is it, does does Elena know where Liliana went? Because Liliana is still self. Oh yeah, she's just going to walk over to a rock and just whisper to the rock. <laughs> where Liliana, you see Elena about a hundred feet over. <laughs> I was gonna say I rolled real good on my stuff. You both check. did, so you both mm-hmm. <laughs> can't even find I mean, each it's other. Just so. like just smirks, just knowing that she's probably not whispering where she's at. Actually, you would not see Elena because Elena also stealth, unless Elena. No, Elena. I, bro- did, bro- I broke. Elena I broke. I broke stealth, I broke okay, stealth to try and stealth. be a mediator. Okay, gotcha. Lilia just watches <laughs> Elena just in the complete wrong place. Just kind of snickers to herself. And is going to watch this just to keep an eye on things. <laughs> okay. So give me an athletics check. Oh, you do have the guidance so, on you. Guidance? What does that do? An extra you add D4. a D4. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. So 16 plus a D4. Tony. Okay. So... You both are, you surprise everybody. And to make this extra funny, this is never seen on screen. It just shows everybody's reactions of a scimitar doing a handstand. And everyone's just like, whoa. And um, she's like, well, how long can you hold that? And her arms are like wiggling at this point. Uh, and this goes, hopefully not for very long. We actually have to get going. <laughs> I'm still carrying everything. Oh, oh, you want to give I up assume, then? I assume says. you dropped it. You know she you starts to sweat. I, I cast Salvatore and I make the ground underneath her shake. Wow, cheating. You know, you know if you do that, it's going to uh, affect both of them. No. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop, grab... Uh, well, she falls down before you do. This is pretty much where I was getting to. Oh. And she gets up and she like wipes the snow off of her. And you can't hold for much longer than that. And you yeah. let yourself down and then get back up. Um, and she well, actually helps you up <laughs> if you let her. I, yes, I will. And I will tell, let her. Well, I will say. Well, I, I guess we'll have to do like a tiebreaker on the tavern. 
Oh, we don't we don't head up to the towns up north. Perhaps you can Are you okay? Perhaps you can head back to our shelter. Uh or crack. We we we've got a thing that we need to take care of. Involves some Drugar. So, like, speaking of that, like, yeah, we're we're chasing some Drugar. Do you know anything about it? It would be of most use. Oh, like, really um, tiny, grumpy, purple people, or ash people. Yes, seen them going that way. Ash holes. Just points the direction you guys were heading anyway. Mm. Okay. Never got your name. I'm Falk. Breaking proof. Horse. I know, sorry. Sweetness. Horse horseman that can stand on human hands. You know, it's my best health. And who are Vol you? Vogue. Oh, well, okay, they don't call you Vogue. They call you Strong Arm. They give you a nickname. <laughs> nice. Um Strong Arm. My name is on this list that I'm looking at. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hello, That's on this list that you're looking at. Oh, okay. I got confused. So, out of character. Um, they have nicknames and clan names and birth mm -hmm. names. So, she's going to give you her nickname. And she says, I am, I am twice orphaned <laughs> of the Tholaka Laga clan. That's actually an option here. Twice she is more even, she, she, she is she is even more powerful than Batman. She's orphan squared. <laughs> yes. First parents went off to fight White Dragon, never came back. Second adoptive parents, aunt and uncle, go after same dragon, don't come back. <laughs> May I ask you where are you going? We are hunting boar. Hope you have plenty. Be careful, there's a were bear around. This is about when Lily Anna will. Is it the White Walker? Probably. It was very white. Where was it? Uh, it was it was actually someone who had met her. Where were they? Um uh, about I must a, know. A day a half day's travel. Can I roll insight on this before Elena? goes and spills all the details. I'm curious about what they plan to do, considering their reaction. Okay, you don't... I, you, what's your passive? You don't need to roll this. I'm pretty sure. My passive insight is, I think, a 12. Because Goliaths are really good at not hiding their emotions. Um, yeah. <laughs> they look very enthusiastic, like they want to meet them. For like a positive thing, not a okay. negative thing. It's not like they want to be like, where are they? I want to kill them. It's more like the fans. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And actually, and with that too, Liliana will kind of unveil herself as well. And Lena just points back. One, one so of the Goliaths, the biggest of the males, screams like a girl, <laughs> jumps back as you pop out of the snow. <laughs> yeah, Lena just just smiles and just points back where they came from. It goes about a half half a day or so's travel that way. I will say you probably won't see them uh, where we had, where we had left them. They mentioned going out hunting. They're trying not to laugh at their one friend that screamed like a girl, and um, they they're like, "Oh, thank you. thank you. I guess I guess we'll be getting bored later then. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> let's go." And she picks up her great axe. And they don't really say goodbye. They just run in that direction. Or at least in Yeah, they just smiles and goes after them. Safe travels. <sighs> Not even facing you, her offhand goes like this in the air as they continue jogging through the snow. Cool yeah. dwarf. Elena just smiles and just looks, you know, well, they yeah. seem like a fun bunch. Out of care out of DMing character. If if you would have went to like their clan or whatever, I'm pretty sure Vol could have got some tattoos. Nice. At we'll have to make that as a later. We'll have to make that as a later trip. 
But anyway, so you all continue your travel. One day, one day we'll have to do that, Scotty. Yeah. Right now we have more important things. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. The yeah. entire fate of the... Uh, yeah, we have a ticking clock. We have to take yeah. it off. Yeah, let's be honest. This was a random encounter. Um, but... <laughs> we will have, like I said, on our way back, we'll need a place to stay. There we go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, too bad they didn't tell you where it's at. We'll have to find it. Uh, let's we'll just see. put up the bat signal. <laughs> the Vogue signal. The Vogue signal. It's just a, it's just a, it's just a signal of a uh, centaur doing a handstand. Yeah. All right. So now we get to the tough part. So as you're going through the woods, the the elevation starts to go up a bit, and you start doing a bit more of mountain hiking. Um. And. Unlike the last time you guys did mountain hiking in Kevl's Karn, I actually have the mountain traveling rules now um, that I should have been doing. Um, and you all start heading up there, and you're pretty sure you have to cross one of these mountains, which will take, if you're lucky, a day to get across. And you should be really close within sight of this fortress, hopefully. They've probably hidden it in the mountains, so you probably wouldn't be able to see the entrance. But mm-hmm. you're you're getting close. You're you're if if the hiking is good, a day away. So who is going to lead on the hike? Because this matters. You guys need a um, trying to remember what they're called. Um, Sherpa. A Sherpa. Who's going to be the Sherpa? Um. I would say probably me. I think I have one of the higher perceptions of the group. This will be um, survival. Oh, survival. So it probably then, should be River. Then it should be River, yeah. I mean, that, yeah, okay. River needs a pet alpaca. Or llama. I have Volg. Does that count? I mean... It's like if you took a llama and then shaved it and then make it skinnier. I don't know. Made way the llama like, twinkier. Busted. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say like if the if the snow gets too thick or the the way too impractical, I will get Reaper and Prism on my back if they allow it. Okay. Yeah, I, River is definitely our leader for this one. All right, what's your bonus on survival? Plus seven. Excuse me. Okay, so I'm gonna need you. I'm to roll me a survival check as you start heading up the mountainside. There are trees and such, but you guys are actually like doing a bit of climbing now. So can Fix I the do... crampons on? Mm-hmm. Am I able to do guidance on myself? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and do that since this is a... That. And... Twenty-nine. Okay. You start heading up the mountain. Give me another one. Twenty-seven. Okay. You all you all are making great progress as River is able to find really good spots for you guys to loop around without being too much hassle. Um a lot less of straight verticality and um, loose rocks that you guys could slip on or pack down ice from other people's rails. Um, essentially, I'm having you roll every hour. So you guys have been traveling up the mountain for two hours now. And it's starting to get kind of dark as I need another survival check. Well, it's always dark, but I'm starting to get late. Thirty. Okay. Um, at this point, three hours in, you all look down and you're surprised at how far you've gotten up onto this mountain. Um, you're actually almost near one of the one of the top spires of the mountain at this point, and it's getting kind of windy. Give me another survival. Mm. Uh, 12. 
Okay. Um, it is at this point that the winds and the snow start to get it's, it's very treacherous. And actually, I'm going to roll this real quick. Yeah, a blizzard is um, blowing in, which is probably at the worst time possible because you guys are near the highest elevations here. The air is starting to get a little thin, but we're not like Mount Everest levels high. So it's not going to be too bad, but you definitely can feel it, especially since you guys have been doing days of travel and then spent the last half of this day going up the mountain. And you're pretty sure you'll need a rest at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately for River, on this last trek you guys did, um, you reach a dead end and you realize that you have to turn around and go another way. We should probably, we might want to bunk, try and bunker down for the night for at least the. Is there any part in the side of the mountain where we can tuck in for a while? Not where you're at currently. We don't, I mean, we can literally just do it on anywhere with, um, with Prism. You wouldn't be able to rest very well without having this flat surface to lay on. Fair. Well, was there anything that we passed on the three good checks that would be a good area? Yeah. But you need to give me one more survival roll. That's fair. Good news, you can't fail by five or more with your bonuses. I'm pretty sure. I might have jinxed it. 25. Okay. Um, luckily, within a few minutes, River's able to find a good spot for you guys to set up camp. It's not quite a cave, but there is a bit of a... Um, um, I'm trying to think of the word. Outcrop? Out, yeah, an outcrop. That can at least partially shelter you guys from the blizzard as... Um, T-Posing Prism virtually casts Tiny Hut. Probably doesn't even ritual cast, it just uses a spell slot. Um, we'll say, for the sake of mechanics, virtually casts it. And um, you all set up camp for the night. And we're just going to skip forward on this really easy. You guys go through your night shifts. Um, and there is nothing that you guys encounter. Um, besides a random goat just hopping up and then just hops on top of the hut and then continues hopping up the mountain. Sure, 91 degrees is just going straight up the mountain. Yeah, essentially. Um, and then when it's morning time, um, the dome disappears. And it's still windy, but it is clear skies as you continue your hike. And you can give me um, another survival check. Luckily, you guys aren't doing Lord of the Rings stuff where there's like mountain giants or whatever. 26. Yeah. OK. Um, you find a much better path as you actually go past the peak of the mountain and you can see into the val uh, one of the many valleys that reaches into the spire of the world. Oh, is this where we're going to learn how to do Fushro Da? I mean, that's essentially what the scenery is like now I think about it. It's a very Skyrim. Um, and now you go from, instead of going uphill, you are going downhill. And I'll need another survival check. Sixteen. Okay. Um, at first, you're a little overconfident on going downhill because you're like, oh, thank God, we're going downhill now. Um, and since you're guiding ahead of everybody, there's a spot where um, one of the rocks actually slips and a bunch of, bunch of stuff actually starts sliding down and it causes a bit of um, rock and debris to continue to go down the slope. And after that, you're a lot more cautious. And um, find a safe route 
as you continue going down. Survival. Twenty one. All right. You're about halfway down the mountain at this point. Not much more I can say. Another survival. Whoa. Nineteen. Okay. Um, you continue going down. You're almost at the bottom. I like to think Perry is like in a cocoon bed roll on um, Volg's back. That sounds fair, yeah. Um, and River, you're pretty sure that you guys will reach the bottom of the mountain in the next two hours or so if things keep going this well. One wrong step and we can get down there a lot faster. You can get down there safely. Hmm. 24. Okay. And then one more. Mm -hmm. 17. All right. As you reach the bottom of the mountain, um, Probably a bit winded at this point because you have spent the equivalent of a day mm -hmm. going across this mountain. Um, that's when popping up from around a rock, you see <clears throat> another kobold. And oh. as as they notice, as the you notice them. They peek their head back behind a rock. And you Hello? hear murmuring and barking in Draconic River. You hear, like, I don't know, they're being subtless. Should, I can should hear we you ask over him? there. And the other one's like, I don't know. Yay! <laughs> a tail just like, like they're scared and their tail just goes up and you guys like see the tail from behind the rock. I'll respond in Draconic. Um, and they pop and they come around this tiny rock that you're surprised four kobolds were hiding behind. They're not a trench coat, are they? No. Okay. They are wearing very improvised fur um, attire for the warm weather. Oh. One looks like it's wearing a very, very old-looking coat that is sized for a medium-sized creature. Um, another one seems to have um, what appears to be bits of gray cat fur, like not the skin itself, just the fur, and they just like put it in their in whatever clothing they have, and there's like little bits of the fur coming out every once in a while, um, and other other improvised winter clothing. You, you can come out. We're not gonna and, hurt you. And they did. They hop out, and they're like, okay, ah. Uh. Go, go, you ask him. And then, like, that one that initially popped out, like, pulls another, the one that was for the spec up towards you. And it goes, like, um, you know where we can find Dragon? Are you looking for an ice dragon by chance? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We've heard tales of it, but we have not come across it yet. You've heard of tails? I heard they have one. They have more than one tail? Wags his tail excitedly. We have heard stories about this one. But Story. just have you seen stories? any dark looking elves? Uh, not elves, but the dwarves around here? Yeah. They got a fortress right over there. Points at the mountain on the other side of the valley. Right at the foot of the mountain. Can't miss it. If you help show us the way there, they're tra actually trying to uh, get in touch with the, the dragon. Roll me persuasion. Fifteen. What's in it for us? A giant ice dragon for you to serve. Um, 
the one that you were you're talking with, looks back at the others nervously. And they shrug. They go, okay. Hmm. We we know a shortcut. Follow me. And they lead the party, I guess. Would uh, Elena have cast her uh, telepathy thing only, again? Only if it's something that we, uh, we would want. Like, have the person in the front, in the middle, and then the back have our telepathy. I can stay in the middle and be, you know, just mediating, I guess, or just the, not mediating, but just be like the receiver for everybody. Well, without saying anything, I'd turn uh, to look at you and like point towards my head, trying to signal. Right. Look over to the rest of the party and just tap my temple and uh, and just sort of be like, who all want? Who else wants the uh, extra one? Look at it. Okay, linking you guys up. Spending. I'll spend my free use of it for the day. Uh, I just marked that off on my sheet. Okay. So, um, the four Talk. kobolds introduce themselves. There's Glug Glug, Yip Yip, Scritch Scratch, and Padawack. Hmm. Did he give the dog a bone? <laughs> no. All right. My bone. I mean, everybody feels that similar sort of like hair on the back of your neck standing up sensation as Elena links. The three of um, wait, so I can do a three creatures. Oh, I can choose one other person. So it'll be River, uh, Volg, and who else would want one? Morning, morning, Tiefling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Glug Glug. Who else wants the uh, uh the last? Psionic link. Give it to Perry. Perry. Right. So everybody who gets the um <laughs> you can hear the conversation that's happening. I am asking this out of character. Oh no, I was one of the kobolds like curiously was like looking at sleeping Perry on uh Volg's back. And then, then she slowly wakes up there just like hi. <laughs> and then just Are you sick? Just... Oh, just got three hours of sleep last night. I'm sorry. That's right. Do, do they speak anything besides draconic or yeah, they're speaking common. Okay, good. Yeah, everybody gets the similar like hair in the back of your neck standing up feeling as Lena links the four pe- the three people with the sound X and goes, All right, we should be all linked up. I'm a little bit groggy today, so I've only got this for like three hours. Thanks. So I get more awake at least. So if you didn't hear what they were saying, thinking, uh, thinking in the link. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Yeah. Via telepathy, but like, uh, so these guys are looking for the dr- ice dragon, and they're going to show us a shortcut. I don't really know if we should trust them, so keep on alert with them. Always do. Thanks for the heads up. Also, you guys found you guys met an ice dragon. No, I saw one. You, I mean, Matt, it's a strong word. Silver dragon or a white dragon? Look white to me. I don't know. Wasn't like a dwarf uh, dragger boss trying to get one? Hmm. Hmm. And you're just like, if it's a white dragon, these things are dead as soon as they see it. I mean, I won't lose sleep over it. Fair enough. You, you uh, all hear with your past perception as they whisper loudly to each other in a huddle, like huddle up. Not sure if we can trust Elf. Elf seems fishy. Stares at others. Says nothing. I'm gonna look over at them and just say. Uh, doesn't have Seriously? weapon either. Seriously? I, I have they pop out of their huddle. Uh, they're like, oh uh, we uh, this way. <laughs> um 
You heard that thing? Out of here. Out of, out of character. Scotty, I do have weapons. Are they visible? Yeah, I've got two daggers and a short sword. Oh. Hi, bad. <laughs> hmm. Concern. Right. It's just that you, they don't they don't have a lot of use on them. So the shortcut you were mentioning, shall we? Yeah, this way. Yeah, definitely keeping my eyes out after hearing that. I'm not really trusting these little things. One kobold you can trust when they're in a pack, don't. Fair enough. And we're, we're thinking this now, over the over the link, by the way. Now, while we travel together, we share food. Unfortunately, we don't have food. <laughs> Do you? There it is. Lena just thinks over the psionic link, and there it is. Uh, we have some few food, yes. Uh, do you like owlbear? It's okay. Right, Killed my cousin. Oh, well, now you can eat it. Yay. Come in. What's that? Magic stone. Harry, is your mom calling? <laughs> Sorry, it was my... I know, I'm just playing. Is this my mom calling? Should I answer? Uh, ooh, it's been, a, been four days, I think. It has been the 10 day. No. Um, but it has been that 10 day, so you can call. Just to heads up. I won't. I'm just embarrassed. <laughs> Snored. Um, we I, we I couldn't hear like, it. I... Yeah, we didn't hear it. Oh, good. Thank God. Uh, should, I, uh, should I call my mom? No, I'm not going to call her. You never uh, call. You never write. Yeah, are these are going to give us grandkids? Tunnels. Dwarves never see you here. Dwarves, this dwarves never travel in tunnels. Uh, Did we mention that we were looking for dwarves? Yeah. You asked okay. where the, the, if you had seen them, and they're like, yeah, they come from that place. Oh, okay. We'll press X to doubt. Yeah, are we getting any kind of vibe off uh, of these? Passive insight. Rows? You can roll if you want, but your passive insight is you're pretty sure the kobold's being genuine. Okay. Yeah, it's 19 in insight. Yeah, you're pretty sure the kobold is being genuine. Okay. Well, lead on. Uh, traveling through this tight tunnel, especially tight for Volg, um, you continue traveling. And you seem to just keep going further and further down. We can always have Prism cast Grease on Vogue so he slides are easier. Yeah, we'll, we'll say that happens once in a while. Um, Look. And uh, they're, they're traveling, and then you get to a spot, and you're like, wait, be very careful. Big pit. Okay. And um, they travel a little bit further ahead, and you guys follow, and it eventually gets to this little opening. And as it opens up, you seem to be in this big, vast chasm, and you notice that there isn't really a walkway on the side, but it's just a big, giant, gaping, bottomless pit, it seems. Any, uh... And they start, like, like shimmying on the on this like, very narrow side path. Any rocks or stones around? Yes. I pick one up, uh, cast light on it, and cast it down, see if we can see the bottom. You don't. You, yeah, don't, hear, you don't hear it land. Well, you, hear, you hear it like bounce off the walls. Oh, well, that's death. Yeah. Stick close to the wall. 
log tippy toe. Okay. Do your handstand if you have to. Um, I can try. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend trying here. Just be careful. I mean, I can try to be as silent as possible, which is not saying much. Well, not silent, just careful. With the pit Careful I can be silent. No. And deadly. Always. You can you can be one, not the other. What how what silent? How wide is this chasm? Uh it looks at least a hundred foot diameter. Ugh. Okay. The ceiling is about another two hundred feet up. You appear to be like inside of the mountain that you were just climbing down. We should have a rope uh, tied to Fog and then tied to Perry as well. The two the... And with How that, long... we'll need uh, either athletics or acrobatics checks. How long do we have to shimmy across this? Looks like you got like a hundred foot gap, or it seems to go into another crevasse out of this big room. Would it be? Do diligent to drive some crampons into the or pitons into the ice and run some rope. I mean, if you want, but the kobolds are already scooting. Uh, if it's a 19 for um, Elena, is I spent the use of cybolstered knack to also make it a little better. Okay. I pet everyone, give them. I say you try to close to everyone, giving them a, a bonus, a plus four to their checks. Do you give the kobolds any? Oh, they're already gone, so. Okay. So anyone who needs it, guidance. Uh, is that like a, it's like climbing stuff? Yeah, it, you're, you're just like balancing on the ledge, making sure you don't slip off, essentially. Okay, because I, I, I am legally obliged to tell you, like, I move, like, one quarter speed climbing oh, that's instead right. of, like, one half because I'm a center. Right, yeah. a coin build. Uh, anyway, it's a 26. Okay. Vault, really Vault makes it look mystifyingly easy for a quadrupedal creature. Was it athletics? Athletics or acrobatics. So the athletics oh, okay. is more of, like, you using your own strength to hold yourself against the wall, finding just athletics, spots right to grab, and acrobatics is more the balancing. Right here for acrobatics. Okay. How about Perry? Mm, 29. And I think Liliana's the last one. Uh, I got 30. Okay. Jesus Christ. Um, Back so thinking over across the ice. You, you all start to across this and it's just a video game cutscene that's not a cutscene where you just hold the move forward button and your character like, yeah. slides across that's how easy this is for you all um the two the kobolds ahead of you the four of them one of them's like ah, 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 and he starts to fall and he grabs another one and then they both fall into the chasm to their deaths is there any way to grab them before oh! they do can i use my whip to try to catch them they were about 50 feet can ahead of you guys them? Why? Do I, I'm sorry. Uh, one moment. You're 50 ah! feet away from them. Couldn't. Um, unless there's something you can do as a reaction, you can't catch them in mm. time. Shit. Does any one of them do the Wilhelm scream? Um, it's a high pitched Like the cool, bald, measly version, yes. <clears throat> Wait, does Prism have like that feather fall? Let me check. Uh, no imprism, even if they did, they would not use it on these kobolds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's just true. I, I just, I mean, I gotta be honest. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, and then the, the two that survive, like, look down the hole, and then they just keep moving. <laughs> they don't even, they don't even, like, go like, no, or anything. They just keep going. 
All right, Cobalt. Anyway. You come, will you come back here so I can hold on to your hands so you don't fall in the giant pit and I don't cry, please? Roll persuasion. I'm fine, Perry. I'm not going to fall in. I will. You too. Would you like to be held with my arms? I'm already across. Those those are really fine arms, though. Persuasion? Yes. Fifteen? Okay. The two remaining kobolds are almost all the way across the chasm, and they turn and see you and go, okay, and they start coming back. No, Perry! No! <laughs> and as the one no, starts to shimmy going. back, and as the one starts to shimmy no. back, goes, <laughs> ah. Is there any... Is there, <laughs> is there any way... Gym. Is there any way that I can just toss a dagger and pin one of them to the wall by their clothes? Roll the hit. Uh, I'm afraid to now that I brought it up, but fine, I'll do it. Oh boy. Yes. Oh, 20, 26. There's more cobalt this way. The one that goes to fall to its death falls about 100 or about 60 feet when a dagger goes tunk, and they're just stuck to the, the edge of the, the well, wall. Well, I just love the chasm. Oh. How do you plan to get him up? How far down? 60 feet. Tink, 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 tink. Drive a piton in and some rope. Their improvised clothes start to rip almost immediately. No! I swing down on the rope to grab him. (laughs) Athletics. Yeah, like uh, this is where we lose all the coal balls. (laughs) Sunday all over again. (laughs) Yes, yes. (laughs) For context, Scotty and Callie. This is definitely athletics. Scotty okay. and Callie almost died in our one game because Scotty uh, ate shit on some rocks, almost fell off a cliff. Callie went to go save them, and neither of them could fucking roll anything. To be honest, the highest I rolled was like a nat four. It was mm-hmm. it was like oh my these God. were at advantages, and I had cast spells to make myself better at it. Good grief. It genuinely the dice the dice, be dead. The <laughs> dice gods were angry. They were crying for I was, life. I was telling Aya our DM, like, just just let me die. Just the dice want me. me to die. Just let it go. Just let it happen. Just let it happen. And she's like, no, this is a Kingdom Hearts game and no one dies. <laughs> Donald she, just walks she away. She was going to let me die. Oh, she's 19, a jerk. by the way. I'm joking. She's not a jerk. 19? Okay. Yep. Um, it's just like and like as the kobold starts to fall, you just hear like dun dun na 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 as you just swing in and you just grab the kobold and save him. No, we just mean Can we take a second to Yeah, it was like can we take a second to see like an Indiana Jones motion with a Jurassic Park soundtrack? Yeah, you did the Jurassic Park. Yes I did. It's a heroic song. Wait, careful Disney. It's a great song. Um, like as a, as you're oh, swinging and the kobold is like in your arm, it goes in in kobold draconic. My hero, and it smooches you in the side of the cheek. <laughs> I was waiting that I drop him. <laughs> I contemplated, but I didn't. Just, just I, I just pictured the fucking like emotional roller coaster we would have put Callie through there, and you. You neatly land on the other side of the chasm with this kobold. Unharmed. Someone get my rope, would you? You're still holding onto it. I'm talking about the part that's secured into the ice with the piton. Elena will just like get it and just un. Um... Don't wonder if you have like an ice pick or a pickaxe. Uh, I don't have one. Well, I need to just, there my if ice you have pick. a weapon with piercing damage, I'll say you can just wedge it out. Yeah, I'll just wedge it out with my other dagger. Hey, look, Perry, I'm coming back too. Did I lose that? Did I lose oh. that dagger, by the way? No. Okay, good. And with that, so, you all get across the other side, and the two kobolds that are alive are like, well, more of us survived this time. 
there were more of you before? About 37. Uh, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> um, like I will telepathically <laughs> I will for the first time use the telepathic link to say like River, you have to tell us your story someday. <laughs> Mental uh, telepathy, there's a reason I travel alone. Like, I mean, I no can't help but notice the female kobold he saved is now giving him like the eyes and, bl- and does like the blink. Does it do the you blink? Like does, it, does she blink and then her eyelids have written in draconic I love you on it? <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> oh boy. I'm pretty sure great. I could survive that fall. <laughs> uh, save it for She does not let her. River go, by the way. That's cute, though. Aww. Kind of. Where, did you, get, where, are you, where are you getting the skull? I dug it up. Me. I guess she found herself a dragon after all. And they live happily ever after. Ever after. And it shows like River like trying to get her off of him as the carriage is going away. Uh. Anyway. Um, so as you reach the other side of the chasm, you you uh go through the opening, and it leads back outside. And then that's when you realize that this just led you to uh, a different mountain. Did they lead us in the wrong direction? And you notice that the mountain you were supposed to go to is still on the other side of this valley. Did they lead us to the wrong mountain? They actually led you a little further away. I pull out my pistol. No! <laughs> you like our shortcut? Learned from Goblin. No, 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 no. Oh. Pull back the hammer. No! <laughs> no, I jump in front of the pistol. You think that's going to stop me? No, I know it's not. 24 to hit on my soul knife. With 19 damage on the psychic blade to the one that said that you like our shortcut. You know what, I'm going to roll for it. Actually, I'm going to have you roll for it because you rolled roll. the attack. Roll I, me I any the... dice, evens, or odds. And let me know the result. Um, do I have to choose it before I roll the dice? or No, No, just tell what it is. Scotty needs to it's decide essentially which the one of the two he's targeting. Okay. Evens. Okay, um, the kobold that is not having a liking for River is the one that says that, and you shoot it, and it, it's just dead. I, I don't shoot it. I just, this offhand, just like twitch my fingers, and a psychic blade just, just flies out from it, and just catches it between the eyes, and it just collapses over. Yeah, you killed it. Psychic damage, right? Yep, psychic damage. 19 psychic damage, because I rolled for sneak attack as well. Yeah, it just falls over <laughs> dead. She and the goes, one that River saved holds River even more tightly. She just goes, I'm not going to get mad. Something tells me you already are. Oh, you know me so well, Lily. You know me so well. I don't need to know you to know that. I mean, she <laughs> looks at you. You did literally just kill a person. This kobold is like super scared now. It's like shaking. Yeah, I... Was that a family member of yours? Oh, I think that they lost like all 35 of those last time. Except last time they lost them to what I'm assuming is going to be natural selection. This time, natural selection got sped up just a little bit more when it know. led us. It is it's just selective. Then that you hear on the other side of the mountain valley high above um on that mountain comes a loud grinding noise as ice sheets break off of the fortress walls and tumble down the mountainside and suddenly great doors of ice previously hidden under snow stand open more than 300 feet above the base of the mountain 
and from between them flies a huge dragon made of dark ice. Its eyes glow with a bright golden light as it lets out a terrible roar and hurls itself into the air and glides towards you guys over top of you and away from you. Heading north towards Tang Town. Fuck. And that is where we're going to end it from. Of course. Nice. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Can I just walk with her back into the chasm for a second? Just, just me and her. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. She's like, okay. Come back out five minutes later alone. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, all right. And then that's where we ended for the day. <laughs> okay, okay, wait. When you go in there, like, she's like, want to be alone with me? Yes. Well, hold hands, okay? And then you and then it just cuts to you like coming back out later without her. Sparta. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. You you ask her if she could fall for you, and then just Sparta. Cobalt's on the right. What are you trying to say? Not our cobalt. <laughs> I have no idea. Like. So, as far as I know, like there's two diff- very different kind of kobolds. Mm. This is a spurk kind of kobold. River is the the river kobold. What does that mean? Plugs. Ah, who was oh, first? What did you say, Lewis? No, I'm like I really would need to know River's story now. Spoilers. That's perfect, actually. Dr. River. You got got any last words to say before the night's over? Mm, spoilers, sweetie. Spoilers. Nice. Why don't we go to Volg next? Volg, what do you got going on outside of this game? What I got going on outside of this game. Um, so, take me out on social media, I'm all around the internet, on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. Yes, these three. Uh, I do a bunch of art. You can check the Retroverse, it's a 5e setting with all the things you like, probably, because you're a millennial. Let's face it, you're getting old, and you laugh. Well, <laughs> millennial, except for Callie. Yeah, we're all uh, millennials. It's Kali that is like, whatever comes next. Zoomer. She's a Zoomer. Zoomer. But, like, I'm a you still... Uh, like, yeah, I mean, if you watch cartoons in the Saturday morning instead of watching Netflix, you will love the Retroverse. Check out this 5E setting. And other than that, just have fun. And enjoy life. Uh, I believe it's available on Drive Through RPG, and right now they have the Players Mix, which is their equivalent of the Players Handbook. Yes, the Players Mix is already available for sale. If you didn't catch on the Kickstarter, and we will be releasing the uh, GM bits next month, I guess. As as much time as he needs, I know it's been a lot of work. So, and he's got yeah. he's he's you know, our friend Chris, aka Snickle Socks, over on Twitter. He's been up he's been updating everybody on um, yeah. the progress of it. So, if you want to yeah, see that, you is, can follow him on he's Twitter. Been, he's been through a lot, and he's been really good about updating people lately. And he's almost done. Like we are doing the last dungeon and the last. I mean, the last half, like, really, really, we will get the the Dungeon Master bits shortly, and then we will still have to go through a couple updates, but we're, we're there. You're, like, 95%. Uh, Harry Winkle, what do you got going on? Uh, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, for uh, for us Americans who have it for, like a month later than the Canadian. You know. for, um, 
for the for, for the Americans. Um, follow me on Twitter, Cap Cali. Sometimes I post art. I'm sorry about everything <laughs> tonight. What are you um, sorry about? But uh, well, first killing the kobolds on. Yeah, they killed the themselves. Animals, killing the kobolds. Um, yeah, they 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 killed themselves. They did this to themselves. Being like super low energy. Um, it happens. And then. <laughs> falling asleep and then snoring yeah <laughs> we didn't so, hear you snore Tally. Yeah. you did mute yourself we Good. didn't hear you snoring and it's okay to fall asleep because like you said you only got three hours of sleep that night good news is you got extended uh weekend so yeah 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 but anyway uh yeah uh we had our episode of unwritten yesterday on vax's channel fracture boon D. Uh, it was really fun um mm-hmm. i I had a lot of fun um, and some people got upset and I some people punched a nerd and it was it was fine <laughs> yeah, that also was... the, the most important oh, oh. The, the most important part being I a uh, fucking smoked uh, a character's yeah. brother god damn she was vicious it was ridiculous yep uh but that's it was cool you should check it out uh we normally have it at eight o'clock on every other tuesday it's called unwritten just check it out anyway that's it for me all right um jan what do you got going on hello everybody january underscore silence pretty much everywhere you look um I make D&D homebrew over on DMs Guild, and hopefully in the future I'll be following in the footsteps of the amazing Snickle Socks and UEs by making my own setting over on Drive Through RPG, but that's still in the early stages, so I'm still going to be releasing homebrew on DMs Guild. Um, speaking of the flight, the College of Flighting Bard and the um, Veil Strider Ranger are unfortunately going to be delayed until after the holidays, be, uh, not until after the holidays, until after Thanksgiving. I hope to have them out by the end of the year, but unfortunately I'm not going to be able to make myself impose deadline for December 6th for the flighting bar because of holiday weirdness. I wanted to get it out before Trick's Haven, but sometimes the card is normal that way. Also check us out, oh, check myself, Sage, and Yuis out over on Backed Channel 1 on YouTube, where we play through um, Mage Hand Press's Dark Matter setting in the quest for the Quantum Rose. Last episode was really fun. Whenever it gets uploaded, uh, you guys are in for a treat because if you like Guardians of the Galaxy and weirdness, then you will enjoy our wonderful little brand of weird. And yeah, just keep catching us here on this channel for some more winter uh, wackiness. That's pretty much all I got right now. All right. And um, last but not least, um, Vex, what do you got going on? Well, as Kelly said, you can find me on my channel every other thir- Tuesday for Unwritten. Same week as that, every other Thursday is Saffron Academy, which will not be running this week because of Thanksgiving. And then um, next week, on Sunday, we have the double header of Starfall and Union Academy on my channel, Fractured Moon D&D. First game's at 12.30, second game's at 3. Come check them out. They're a blast. And that's it for me. All right. Um, thank you, everyone, for watching, and we'll see you all the next Wednesday. You forgot Prism dragging sound across the floor. <laughs> Prism just rises from the chasm. Oh, all right. Um, can I everybody? Bye. Bye.